uh, I was in a coffee house one time, a Starbucks, and, and uh, Bob was in the table next to me. I was in Joseph Best Booksellers one afternoon, and I see Bob walking by. I met Bob in July 2012. I co-starred with Bob in, in Beowulf, Prince of the Geats. He motioned to me, and he said hi, and we shook hands, introduced each other, and he said, uh, I'm an actor, and uh, aren't you a playwright? And uh, I said, you know, I've done this short film, and, you know, I, I'm not sure what I'm doing, but, you know, I'm pursuing this type of stuff. And Bob goes, well, write me something. You know, write me something. I'll do it. We were actually working for free. Nobody was paid um, on, this, on this movie. I was searching for places to take acting courses, and at the time he worked at Cincinnati Actors Studio. He very much um, was very active in all of the stage uh, stages around uh, the greater Cincinnati area. He was just a true artist. He, he, he was an actor. He, he, he believed in it. Here's this, like, you know, top-of-the-line actor uh, donating his time, uh, and this was for cancer research, which, which made it even more remarkable. Because in my heart and mind, watching Bob work, he could have been in Hollywood or anywhere else. And our fierce leader, Bob Elkins, took the charge of, you know, helping us all become creative and live in the moment and be present. I think you'd be hard pressed to, to find uh, a theater group that Bob didn't work with. He lived and breathed acting. It gave me a tremendous respect for, for those who are in this craft and those who are good at it. Uh, Bob was committed to it. That, that, he was an actor. That was his life. Bob had um, dyslexia. He told me that early on that he couldn't remember scripts by reading them. Someone had to read the script out loud to him so he could learn his lines because, you know, the words would just kind of get discombobulated. And, you know, I was only like three weeks into learning how to be an actor. And that moment when he said that to me, I was like, your passion is so strong for this that you'll take the extra mile of learning your lines the unconventional way to make sure you can still do what you love. And that's when I told myself, you know, there's no obstacle that's going to get in the way of what I can do because my mentor is a freaking hero and will figure out how to do whatever it takes possible to learn his lines and do what he loves. You really have to <laughs> love your craft and, and love the medium uh, and love being able to, um, you know, uh, communicate your passion for storytelling. If there's anything we can take away from that, I think it's just being being alive, being tuned into the moment, um, not worrying about um, where things are going to be. It's like making the most of where you're at at the moment. Prayerfully, you know, there are those coming behind Bob that he has touched uh, who will carry on that legacy. And I prayed and I prayed. I'm like, God, please send me a father that can teach me to be the person I want to be. And then he sent me Bob. He sent me someone who became my mentor, my coach, my friend, a fearless leader. Let's keep in touch, Bob. <laughs> Let's keep in touch. I love you, Bob. He's resting now. His work is done. And he's, he will be missed.